The slender Arcturian's mocking laughter echoed through the vast chamber, his eyes fixed on the battered warship floating in the anti-gravity field until he saw the glint in the human captain's eyes and the slight upturn of his lips. And the Arcturian's laughter died in his throat. Captain Will Allen stood ramrod straight, his gaze never leaving the scarred hull of the TDN Arizona, a Dread Star-class battleship that had seen the worst of the Draconis conflict a century ago. The war had been brief but brutal, the Draconis dominion striking without warning against the fledgling human colonies. But they hadn't counted on the tenacity of the human spirit or the ingenuity of their scientists and engineers. Technologies developed in secret had allowed the outmatched humans to repel the invasion and broker an armistice, technologies never shared with the galaxy at large, until now. Alan turned to face the Arcturian delegation, his eyes hard. Ambassador Tharos, I assure you the Arizona is far more than a mere museum piece. She represents the unyielding spirit of humanity, our refusal to submit to tyranny or oppression. And if the Draconis threat has indeed returned, you may soon see firsthand what a primitive human vessel can do. As if on cue, emergency alarms blared through the museum, red lights pulsing. Alan's comm crackled to life, a voice tight with tension. Captain, long-range sensors have detected Draconis ships entering Arcturian space. We need you on the bridge now. Alan's jaw tightened, a fire kindling in his eyes. He turned to his Arcturian guests, his voice low and fierce. It seems you're about to get a front row seat to what museum piece warships can do when crewed by human ingenuity and determination. I suggest you buckle up, Ambassador. We're about to show the Draconis what happens when they dare to threaten our allies. With a curt nod, Alan strode from the room, leaving the stunned Arcturians to exchange nervous glances. The TDN Arizona loomed behind them, her battle scars suddenly seeming less a sign of age and more a testament to her resilience. And as the first distant explosions rumbled through the hull, they couldn't help but wonder if they had gravely underestimated the humans and their primitive technology. Captain Allen and Ambassador Tharos rushed back to the Arcturian Embassy, their footsteps echoing through the ornate halls. Tharos immediately headed for the communications room, his fingers flying over the console as he contacted his superiors. The news was grim. A Draconis fleet had launched a surprise attack, their ships tearing through the border defences like tissue paper. The Arcturian homeworld was in their sights, and the Arcturian military was scrambling to respond. Theros turned to Alan, his face tight with worry. Captain, we need your help. Our forces are being overwhelmed. Can the human fleet assist us? Alan shook his head. I'm sorry, Ambassador, but our main fleet is too far away. They'd never make it in time. He paused, a glint in his eye. But I have an idea. He pulled out his communicator and placed a call. Admiral Blackwell, it's Alan. I need a favor. The voice on the other end was gruff. Alan, what's this about? I'm a little busy running a museum, you know. Sir, the Draconis are attacking the Arcturians. If they fall, we're next. I need the Arizona. There was a long pause. The Arizona! Alan, that ship is a relic. It belongs in a museum, not a battle. Alan's voice was firm. Admiral, you and I both know that ship is more than a relic. It's a symbol of human resilience. And right now, we need that more than ever. Blackwell sighed. All right, Alan, you've made your point, but it's going to take time to get her ready. Understood, sir. We'll be there soon. Alan ended the call and turned to Tharos. Come on, Ambassador. Let's go see what a museum piece can really do. They returned to the museum hangar, and Tharos couldn't believe his eyes. The Arizona was transforming before him, shedding its antique facade. Hidden panels slid back, revealing gleaming pulse cannons and missile batteries. The hull shimmered as advanced shielding systems came online. Technicians swarmed over the ship, loading ordnance and prepping systems. The hum of power grew louder as the Arizona's engines came to life. Alan grinned at Tharos's stunned expression. She was never truly retired, Ambassador, just kept in reserve waiting for the day she'd be needed again. Tharos could only nod, 
a grudging respect growing in his eyes. He had indeed underestimated the humans and their foresight. As the Arizona prepared for war once more, he couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope. Perhaps with this ancient warrior at their side, they stood a chance against the Draconi's onslaught. The technicians worked at a frenzied pace, refueling the Arizona, loading her missile bays and running final system checks. Captain Allen emerged from the ready room, now clad in his old battle armor. The suit had seen better days, its paint chipped and scarred, but it still fit like a glove. He approached Ambassador Theros, his helmet tucked under his arm. Ambassador, I'd like to extend an invitation for you to join us on the Arizona as an observer. I think you'll find the experience enlightening. Theros hesitated for a moment, then nodded. I accept, Captain. I must admit I'm curious to see this museum piece in action. Alan chuckled. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. The two men boarded the Arizona. The airlock hissing shut behind them. The ship's interior was a hive of activity as the crew rushed to their stations, the air electric with anticipation. On the bridge, Alan took his place in the captain's chair, Tharos standing beside him. The viewscreen showed the hangar doors sliding open, revealing the star-studded void beyond. All systems online, sir, the helmsman reported. We're ready to launch. Take us out, Lieutenant. Set a course for Arcturian space, maximum speed. The Arizona surged forward, her engines flaring to life as she cleared the hangar. The inertial dampeners hummed, the only indication of their incredible acceleration. Theros watched the stars blur past on the viewscreen, then turned to Alan. Captain, forgive my skepticism, but how can one ship, even with your secret technology, hope to turn the tide against the entire Draconis fleet? Alan grinned, a glint in his eye. Watch and learn, Ambassador. The Arizona has a few tricks up her sleeve. As they approached the battle zone, the viewscreen filled with the sight of the Arcturian fleet in full retreat. Dozens of ships, many trailing smoke and sparks, fled before the onslaught of Draconis strikecraft. The small, agile fighters swarmed like angry hornets, their pulse cannons tearing into the Arcturian hulls. Bring us in full attack speed, Alan ordered. Prepare to engage the null field on my mark. Tharos gripped the back of the captain's chair as the Arizona plunged into the fray, bracing himself for the inevitable barrage of weapons fire. But instead of the thunderous impacts he expected, the bridge was filled with a low, resonant hum. Null field activated, the tactical officer reported. Tharos watched in amazement as a shimmering energy field expanded from the Arizona, enveloping the nearby Arcturian ships. The strike craft, caught within the field, suddenly went dead in space, their weapons and engines powerless. What, what just happened? Theros asked, his voice filled with awe. Alan leaned back in his chair, a satisfied smile on his face. That ambassador is the power of the null field. It selectively dampens enemy technology, rendering it useless. We've kept this secret for a century, waiting for the right moment to use it. With the strike craft neutralized, the Arcturian ships rallied, forming up around the Arizona like knights around their king. Alan opened a comm channel, his voice ringing out across the fleet. This is Captain Allen of the TDN Arizona. All Arcturian ships, reform and prepare to counterattack. We'll punch a hole through their lines and take the fight to their capital ships. Follow our lead. A chorus of acknowledgments came back. The Arcturian captain's voices filled with renewed determination. As the combined fleet surged forward, Tharos could only marvel at the turn of events. The null field had changed everything, and the skill and courage of the Arizona's crew was unlike anything he had seen before. The Arizona plunged into the heart of the Draconis formation, her pulse cannons blazing, the Arcturian ships close behind. Tharos watched the tactical display, his heart racing, as they closed in on the enemy flagship. The battle was far from over, but for the first time since the invasion began, he dared to hope. The Draconis fleet reeled from the sudden shift in the battle's tide, their formation fracturing as they scrambled to regroup. The Arcturian ships, their spirits lifted by the Arizona's arrival, surged forward with renewed vigor. They targeted the Draconis vessels, 
now vulnerable without their strike craft to screen them. Pulse cannons and missiles slammed into the enemy ships, tearing through their armor and setting the void alight with blossoming explosions. At the vanguard of the counterattack was the Arizona herself, a phoenix risen from the ashes of retirement. Her weapons, an amalgam of old and new technology, proved devastating against the Draconis ships, quantum cannons far more potent than anything the Arcturians had seen, lanced out from her hull, piercing shields and rending metal with each strike. On the Arizona's bridge, Tharos studied the tactical display, marvelling at the sudden turn of fortune. As he watched the Draconis ships buckle under the onslaught, a particular vessel caught his eye. Hanging back from the main engagement was a massive dreadnought, its hull bristling with weapons batteries. The Draconis flagship. Captain Allen, Theros called out, pointing at the display. That ship at the rear of their formation, it must be their command ship. Allen leaned forward, his eyes narrowing as he took in the sight of the dreadnought. He nodded, his jaw set with determination. Helm, disengage from the main battle. Set a course for that dreadnought, full speed. The Arizona peeled away from the clash of fleets, her engines flaring as she accelerated towards the Draconis flagship. The dreadnought's escorts, a screen of cruisers and destroyers, moved to intercept, their weapons hammering at the Arizona's shields. But the human ship pushed forward undeterred, shrugging off the attacks like a bear swatting at flies. As they closed in on the dreadnought, the view screen flickered to life. The sneering face of a Draconis filled the screen, his scales a deep crimson, his eyes burning with malice. You dare approach the fist of Draconis human? Your primitive vessel is no match for us. Surrender now and your deaths will be swift. Captain Allen leaned back in his chair, a smirk playing at the corner of his mouth. Admiral Zarthak, I presume? I'm afraid surrender isn't on the table, but I do have a counteroffer. Alan nodded to his tactical officer. Fire quantum torpedoes, full spread. A salvo of glowing projectiles erupted from the Arizona's forward tubes, streaking towards the dreadnought. They slipped through the flagship's shields as if they weren't there, slamming into its hull in a series of blinding detonations. Plumes of flame and debris erupted from the Draconis ship, and the deck shuddered beneath Zarthak's feet. The Admiral's sneer twisted into a snarl of rage. All weapons, focus fire on that human ship. I want them reduced to atoms. The dreadnought's weapons roared to life, a storm of energy and metal hurtling towards the Arizona. But the human ship danced through the barrage, her own shield shimmering as they absorbed the impacts. On the bridge, Tharos gripped his seat as the deck shook beneath him, but the Arizona held strong. Studying the readouts of the dreadnought, Tharos's eyes widened, he turned to Alan, excitement in his voice. Captain, I've detected a fluctuation in their shield harmonics. If we can match the null field's frequency to it, we might be able to punch through their defenses. Alan grinned, a fierce light in his eyes. Good catch, Ambassador, he turned to his operations officer. Adjust the null field frequency to match those harmonics. Let's crack this egg open. The hum of the null field generator deepened, the energy field surrounding the Arizona shifting and pulsing. On the view screen, the dreadnought's shields flickered and died, the shimmering barrier collapsing like a popped soap bubble. Zarthak's eyes widened in disbelief as he stared at his tactical display. The human ship had somehow stripped away his dreadnought's defences, leaving it vulnerable. He opened his mouth to bellow new orders, but it was too late. The Arizona's weapons were already firing, a relentless barrage that tore into the flagship's exposed hull. The Arizona's weapons roared to life, a storm of rail cannon rounds and plasma beams slamming into the Draconi's dreadnought's unprotected hull. The impacts tore through decks and bulkheads, setting off a chain reaction of explosions that raced along the length of the massive ship. Consoles erupted in showers of sparks, and the dreadnought's crew scrambled in panic as their systems failed one by one. On the bridge of the doomed vessel, Admiral Zarthak gripped the arms of his command chair, his claws gouging deep furrows into the metal. His eyes blazed with a fanatic light as he watched his ship disintegrating around him. With a snarl of pure hatred, 
he stabbed a clawed finger at the helmsman. Ram them, he hissed. Drive us into the heart of that accursed ship. If we must die, we will take them with us. The helmsman, his face a mask of terror, nodded and input the commands. The dreadnought's engines flared and the ship lurched forward, aiming its prow directly at the Arizona. Captain Allen's eyes widened as he saw the enemy ship accelerating towards them, its intention clear. He slammed his hand down on the intercom. All hands, brace for impact. Divert all power to shields. The crew scrambled to comply, pouring every ounce of energy into the Arizona's defences. Tharos gripped his seat, his knuckles white, as the dreadnought loomed larger and larger on the viewscreen. The two ships collided with a blinding flash, a titanic clash of metal and energy. The Arizona's shields flared, a shimmering barrier against the dreadnought's mass. For a moment, time seemed to stand still, the fate of both ships hanging in the balance. Then, with a tortured groan, the dreadnought crumpled, its structure unable to withstand the forces at play, its hull shattered, torn apart by the Arizona's unyielding shields, fragments of metal spun away into the void, glittering in the light of distant stars. As the glare faded, the Arizona emerged from the wreckage, battered and scorched but intact. Her shields flickered and died, spent in the desperate defense, but her hull held strong. On the bridge, the crew let out a ragged cheer. The loss of their flagship broke the spirit of the remaining Draconis forces. They scattered, fleeing the system in disarray. The Arcturian ships, their hulls still bearing the scars of battle, moved to secure the area and mop up any stragglers. In the aftermath of the battle, Ambassador Tharos turned to Captain Allen, his eyes filled with a mix of awe and gratitude. Captain, I... I don't know what to say. Your ship, your crew, you've saved us all. And to think, I dismissed the Arizona as a mere relic. I was wrong, and I apologize. Alan smiled tiredly, clasping the Arcturian's shoulder. Apology accepted, Ambassador. We all had our doubts, but the Arizona proved herself today. She may be old, but she's got plenty of fight left in her. But even as he spoke, Alan could see the toll the battle had taken on his ship. The Arizona's hull was cracked and scorched, her systems pushed to their limits and beyond. She had given everything to secure this victory, and it showed. As the Arizona limped back towards the museum under her own power, Alan couldn't help but reflect on the sacrifices that had been made. The secrets of human technology, so long guarded, would now have to be revealed. The war against the Draconis was far from over, and humanity would need every advantage to prevail. But for now the Arizona had done her duty. As she settled into her berth, her crew lining the decks to salute her one last time, Alan felt a swell of pride. The Arizona would be laid to rest with honor, a testament to the skill and determination of those who had built and crewed her. Her legacy would live on, an inspiration for the battles to come. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.